Welcome to the Deer Society Podcast. Here's your host, Brian Lemke. Well, hey everybody, welcome back to the Deer Society Podcast. I'm Brian Lemke, joined by JJ Dukart, and we have Michael Austin back. And today we're going to be talking about uh, production of the new Deer Hunt Man music video. Uh, we've been kind of all over shooting this video from, you know, Nashville to, to Minnesota to the UK. So kind of all over lots of work going into this video, and it's going to be pretty awesome. Um, Michael, let's let's kick things off. Uh, you know, a few months back here, we, uh, we went to the UK. Um, tell us a little bit about that trip. So I've been wearing this face paint ever since we <laughs> left and, uh, no, uh, yeah, man. Uh, the UK was, uh, didn't know really what to expect, uh, filming part of a, a the deer hunting man video over in the UK. Uh, but when we got over there, I mean, the, the backdrop, the scenery was absolutely amazing and everything, uh, seemed to fall into place pretty quick met a lot of really cool people and uh i think that the the entire landscape really would fit any kind of hunting scenario from what you know we saw when we were back there uh the weather was kind of like that you know had that feel and that christmas in the air that you you really like and uh i think it was just a lot of fun getting in, involved and seeing other people's reactions to what we were doing i think that was the best part about the whole thing so i had a blast with that yeah, absolutely. That's pretty cool. And I guess let's back up a second for for those of you who might have missed the the first podcast with Michael. Um, you know, Deer Hunt Man platform is a brand new thing that we're pushing out through the Deer Society. It's a song. It's a movement. It's a lifestyle. Um, JJ, I'll kind of throw it to you, and you can kind of give people the the cliff notes on what Deer Hunt Man is. Yeah. So obviously, uh, like Brian said, song, lifestyle, movement. Um, song is probably the most. I'll just say it, it's the most badass deer hunting song that's ever hit <laughs> the market or the industry. Um, Michael just knocks it out of the park. And messaging behind it, it really just hits that core deer hunter, um, something that they can stand behind, kind of the deer hunter's anthem, um, gets you really fired up, something that everybody can listen to on the way to the field. And then there's just so much more behind it from um, the conservation aspects, the things we're doing to, you know, donate part of proceeds, whether it's, you know, some apparel sales or, or um downloads of the song or whatnot those details uh, will be coming out soon too but yeah just the movement behind it um growing the sport growing the hunting market educating people on deer hunting um just a lot of things and hopefully the podcast that you guys shot the other day um kind of walks it through a little bit more in depth but i think that's kind of a big picture of deer hunting man as um the platform and and maybe you guys can even expand on that a little bit if you want but yeah, no, I, I think you kind of kind of hit the high notes there. And, you know, it, it is really a new deer hunter's anthem. Like I said, you know, before I, I can see myself listening to that, going to the field. And I think a lot of people will, will do the same thing, you know, getting jacked up to go to the go to the stand and, and uh, you know, listen to deer hunt. Man. Well, you know, I think we're going to get some kickback because the they're going to be sitting there trying to be quiet and it's just going to hit them. And they're going to start doing the lyrics. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, you just got to remember that when you're done listening to the song, just keep hearing it in your head. Don't go out to the stand and start singing the song. Oh, man because that's yeah. we'll probably have pissed off people on the deer side yeah. commenting like i got busted because yeah. i was head bobbing exactly was <laughs> stand moving too much. well i was kind of thinking of it too like you're heading to the stand and you're about to get in this environment where you're supposed to be just dead quiet but you're just rocking out in your truck heading to the, <laughs> heading to the field they're gonna pull up into the field drive and have to you know turn the volume way down and but it, it'll be sweet yeah, absolutely. Well, if you guys are watching, actually, on on YouTube or uh, or on on the Deer Society app, you'll see that that Michael's sitting over here, and he's all he's all face painted up. Yeah, and, yeah I uh, love it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that that's actually because we uh, we were just out putting the finishing touches on this music video this morning. We're here, obviously, in Minnesota at the Deer Society headquarters, and just just. Uh, I think wrapped the uh, the final parts of the video. So um, got some epic stuff here the last two days. We've had a, a blast with Michael up here, and uh, yeah, we had him had him all geared up and face oh, face painted up this morning. So yeah, the best part was after when we ended up going to Casey's, and they they look at you like, ah, what's going on with this guy? <laughs> Season isn't on right now. This is kind of scary. <laughs> it's the COVID. <laughs> <laughs> I don't wear a mask. I just yeah. face new paint. Sympt- just- new symptomology to do the face. Yeah. <laughs> Man. Um, yeah, so pretty interesting with this this whole video. You know, it's taken us different places. And, uh, you know, 
it, 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 as badass as the song is going to be, the, the video is going to be just as badass. And, and, uh, we've put a lot of work into it. And as we mentioned, we, we traveled over to the UK. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously Michael, you went and, and Adam and I went and what an experience that was, you know, we, we, we decided to go over there, um, because Michael was actually recording, doing the official recording of the song over there. And, uh, and we wanted to capture some aspects over there. Um, did did some performance scenes over there, and actually captured some of that landscape over there. And uh, it turned out awesome. You know, it, it was really cool. You know, I got a kick out of it. Uh, you know, walking down the streets on, on a little bit of time off when we're in filming, oh, yeah. and 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 Michael, you're there rocking the the Dear Society backwards <laughs> camo hat. You know, walking down the, down the streets of England. You know, and that's. That's something that uh, you, you definitely, I wouldn't imagine that they see over there every day, but uh, I, I think everybody was pretty accepting of it. Oh, Thought absolutely. It was pretty cool. You yeah. Know? A lot of questions, you know, the, the uh, it wasn't the typical, we weren't the typical tourist, you know, that go over there and they're like, I mean, we did touristy things. The cathedral was, a, we had a great day at the cathedral and, and going to the castles and stuff, but uh, just, you know, the walking around part, uh, you could tell that we were kind of the the different kind of tourists. We actually were there for a purpose, and uh, but we were absorbing everything, you know, whether the the traditional English breakfast that we tried on, at several different locations, or you know the the fish and chips because you got to have fish and chips when you're in England. But uh, I think meeting the locals there and uh, and giving them an understanding kind of why we were there and the, and about the movement too, and to see that their input and their excitement about something that we're doing over here. Uh, that could transcend into into their their area and stuff. I think that was the best part about the whole thing was you know seeing the acceptance all the way around. You know, nobody had anything really negative to say about anything that we were doing. So yeah, that was that was pretty cool for sure, and and got to meet some insanely awesome people. Um, you know, friendships that that will probably last a lifetime. I know you've mentioned that you've talked to several of them oh, al- yeah. almost every day. Absolutely, yeah, man. It's it's great because. I mean, you never really think that, that when you're going over to do something like that, that you'd meet people like that. But uh, I think with the the open mindedness we have towards this movement, I think uh, the all inclusive thing just kind of brings everybody into the fold. I mean, we're not going over this and you got to do this, this and this. It's like, hey, check this out. And they like what we're doing. We like what they're doing. They're great people. And that's, you know, that's the seeds of of you know, how hopefully society will end up one day, you know, that whole togetherness thing that everybody's missing. We went over to England talking about deer hunting and, and doing a video and man, we were accepted with, with wide open arms. So it's, it's kind of cool to see that. Yep. You know, absolutely. Well, and you know, I will say for me, one of the coolest things over there, I mean, I obviously love the production part of it and, and you know, all the shots we captured over there, but one of the coolest things for me was the actual recording of the song and, and just being able to, so we, we filmed the recording of the song, you know, Michael, you in there physically recording it and, and Mike Krampus kind of going through that, that process with you. And you'll see some of those shots in the video. Um, but that was so cool for me. You know, I got to put a headset on and, and listen to you guys communicate back and forth. And that was just, wow. I was, I was blown away by how you guys kind of communicated back and forth and he'd kind of tell you what he was looking for and boom, you you'd deliver right back. And that's, that was something I, you know, I think most people never get to see. Yeah. It's, you know, having a, a relationship with a producer, uh, to kind of get that feeling it's, uh, that's where magic really happens when you're, when you're in the production of a song is that producer has to know your limits and where they want to take you. And sometimes they want to push you to the edge of what you can, you know, you can do. Uh, so the suggestions are priceless and you can either be a stubborn artist and, and keep doing it your way and not listen, or you can open up and, and see because producers hear every part of a song. Uh, when you're too close to a song, you want to hear it this way, but a producer is going to hear that grand uh, finale that that big part of the end and this is what the song is going to be and it's like watching a child being born and and growing and being educated and by the time you got you know a, a full rogue scholar at the end with some of this stuff or sometimes you got a, a, a some kid that's not going to do anything you know but watching it from the beginning uh, and the development I think is uh, even as an artist is the funnest part for me because you start with something, you go, yeah, I kind of like that. And then the next thing you know, you're in love with it. And there it is. And I had a ball doing it, especially over there. It was just unique, yeah. you know. 
Yeah, it absolutely was. And, and, you know, it was cool to see finally hear you know, hear the mastered version and see kind of the, the fruits of your labor, if you will, you know, see it all come together when you watch it kind of come together piece by piece, <laughs> man. And it's, it sounds awesome. It turned out absolutely wicked. Um, yeah, you know, it's cool. It was cool seeing you. It was cool seeing, you know, Mike Krampus, how he worked with you. Um, and, and like I said, you guys just interacting back and forth and, and being a part of that that recording, studio recording atmosphere was was pretty awesome. I know Adam spent some time in, in with Mike too. And, you know, Adam's the editor kind of behind the scenes of this whole deal. And he's sitting back there behind the cameras. We tried to get him in on this podcast. <laughs> JJ is still a little mad that he's, he's not in here. But, um, you know... Adam, Adam's kind of the one behind the scenes and he, and he does a, little, a lot of that production. And, um, I know it was cool for him to, to kind of sit down with Krampus and, and see what he does from the kind of music post-production, um, standpoint. So that was pretty cool. He had, and Mike had a pretty sweet setup over there. Um, but all around the UK was, was pretty incredible. I did, uh, I did never get to see any of the turkeys that, that we heard about. Did you, did you get to see any of those turkeys over there? Well, you know, <laughs> So <laughs> along the lines of the uh, movement and the education, uh, it, it would seem that the, uh, that the wild uh, English turkeys, you know, might have been guinea fowl, I'm just saying. But I'm just, you know, uh, when you can consult the Googles, you know, you, you'll find them, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but from a non, you know, from a non hunter, I, you know, it, it's almost, and you, and you don't want to use the term cute, but it is kind of cute when you're yeah. talking to a non hunter or a non woodsman or somebody that's been out in the elements and seen, uh, you know, I, I know that a lot of people for the longest time, man, when I was a kid, uh, a lot of kids from the city thought all turkeys were, were white feathered. And they had no idea that, you know, you'd show them pictures and you say, what's that? And that's a turkey. It's a wild turkey. And they're all turkeys are white, you know, because that's that's their image. You know, when they saw the old commercials about getting the Thanksgiving turkey and, you know, the Butterball logo or however you want to look at it. So uh, having a non outdoors or a non hunter uh, try and identify a wild game is it was cute to me. It was yeah. like almost like uh, that that little kid, that learning, that exploring phase. Uh, which I think with this movement you're going to see is is people are going to see something with new eyes and they don't really get an opportunity to do that as adults, you know, uh, because wherever they grew up, if they were born and, you know, had that city or that or that urban uh, lifestyle, they didn't have the exposure. So with with the, you know, this movement, the deer hunt man movement. Uh, I think the exposure is going to be priceless because, like I said, they're going to look at it with new eyes and they're going to feel like little kids. They're going to they're going to be filled with wonder because this is a an avenue that has never been presented to them in this way. You know, it was either this or this or this is like, here's the information. Run with it. Have fun with it. You know, and that's a great way to do it, I think. Uh and for adults to have fun at that level, I mean, come on. When's the last time you looked at something and got all giddy about it? I mean, that's that's the best part about growing up is being able to look, look at something and have fun with it. Absolutely. Yeah, and I, I think you're spot on. Um, you know, lo lots of cool things like that uh, are, are going to come with this Deer Hunting Man platform. Um, so after the UK, kind of got back, um, evaluated some of the video, um, put some different things together, and... Uh, Finally, and now that that COVID has has tamed out or calmed down, maybe a little bit after you know all the social distancing efforts and and things like that. I'm still waiting on the murder hornets. Still, <laughs> I got the shotgun of the ready. I think those things are big as a bird. Right? I I did, yeah, I, did, I, I did see something on on Facebook the other day, and uh, somebody had posted. It was a picture of you know some of the riots, and oh, and uh, it was a meme, and it said. So did we just skip the murder hornets? Yeah. <laughs> I, I feel like we skipped the murder hornets. Yeah. I mean, yeah. come on. Yeah. But uh, so now that, that that's kind of, of not went away, but slowed a little bit and you're able to do some traveling, um, you know, you're able to come up here to, to Minnesota. Yeah. Um, that's been great. You've been here for the last couple of days and, uh, and we've had some early mornings. We're, we're actually filming this podcast at about nine here in the morning. We got a half day's work in already. Yeah. I think you guys should should join the local news team and the weather department because when we were talking the other day, you're like, you know, when I was talking to Mike and he said, yeah, so we're looking at, uh, so we want you to come in as soon as possible because we got these two days and we think these are going to be the best days. 
And sure enough, man, I flew in. When I flew in and I looked over and I saw the sky and the lightning and the craziness that was going on, I go, these guys are going to want to film this into some kind of storm chaser looking crazy thing. And then uh, I landed. And of course, the rain was hidden and all the craziness. And then I wake up and uh, I meet with JJ out and we drive out to the location and it couldn't have been a better morning. And even this morning, same thing. I was like, this is like, so for, so for you guys to be able to pick that as far as on the production level, come on. Meteorologists are, are the only people that can get get it wrong 86% of the time and keep their job. I think you guys have got to step up on them. So I'm just saying, you know, maybe a little added career thing, you know, push a little bit of weather report out with this stuff. It'd be great. I think the, the production side of things, especially kind of, you know, in this scenario with Deer Hunt Man is a lot like hunting. Oh yeah. Well, you're, you're looking at the weather. You're thinking, well, what stand can I? Should I sit in? What yeah. you know? Where is the sun going to come up? What's what's this condition? And then for this filming, it's we're trying to keep it as real to hunting as possible. So yeah. we're thinking, well, when's the sunrise? Where? I mean, Brian went out and scouted these locations days before, trying to figure out where the you know the sun came up. Uh, what do we need for you know conditions? And yeah. we're just trying to make it as real as possible. And that's what's kind of cool about this project compared to something you do outside of the hunting industry. Yeah. It's just you know, we, the music aspect, you're, you're on point with that production aspect. You're on point with that Bring in the hunting aspect, which we feel like we're pretty on point with that. All three things come together and it's just, I think it's something special. So. Yeah, absolutely. The, the only thing I think that, uh, the, the setup and the anticipation of doing the video puts you in the mindset to hunt and we can't hunt right now. <laughs> and I mean, I'm like, <sighs> it's like you're a little kid man you're getting amped up and you know we're going to it'd be like going we're going to ihop for pancakes we're going to ihop for pancakes and go we stopped serving pancakes a half hour ago and you're like oh you're a little deflated yeah. so uh that that is the only uh downside to to doing the video like the this in the out season um uh, but you know it it it's preparedness and as far as being prepared and being on the spot, man, uh, you guys couldn't have done a better job as far as location. Uh, location is definitely something that I would be where I would be as far as getting ready for a hunt. And uh, I think that, that you guys hit it on the head, really. It just, it couldn't have been a better spot for sure. So. Yeah. And, and, you know, the cool thing about that is, you know, when we hit it in the last podcast, you know, and, and we say, you said it several times out there as we were filming, you know, like a, a grown up shouldn't be able to have this much fun. Exactly. You know, we're out there working <laughs> and we're, we're having a blast. I mean, obviously we, we all get along great together yeah. and, and work great together, but you know, it, it's, we're out there, the sun's coming up, the turkey's gobbling, you know, I mean, and, it, and pheasants cackling all over, you know, it, it's just, it, it, we're filming we're not hunting but man you're in that outdoor atmosphere and yeah. it's like you're in god's country that's yeah. what it's all about you and your know? head's still on a swivel for anything that moves or yeah i mean you're on it like <laughs> riding with jj in the truck <laughs> is a great experience and and he self-admittedly he's like yeah one day i think i'm gonna drive off the edge of the road because i look and there's a deer and i'm looking oh yeah there it is and then <laughs> the big corner's coming up so uh, you know, it's almost like you want those little bumper rails on the, the bowling lanes for little kids when, you know, you're in the truck in a hunting area, yeah. but, uh, you can't help but be amazed at what nature has to offer. And, uh, as huntsmen, uh, and hunts people, ladies, uh, when we get out into the elements and we become one with that, that area and, and really feel and get to where we need to be. There is anything better than that on the face of the planet. Now, whether you're just going out to observe, uh, which is a prime example of kind of what we've done. We went out to an area where naturally we'd be out there getting ready to harvest an animal. And uh, we we're out there in the elements and we saw countless deer, countless turkey and everything moving around. And the excitement's still there. You know, we're up at, at you know, 430 in the morning, which is unnatural for a musician. I'm just letting you guys know. But um, to to be up like that and to have that experience and get that adrenaline rush, uh, even con connected without being in a stand and, and harvesting an animal is priceless. And I think that a lot of people would actually get that. I mean, there there are bird watchers that get excitement out of watching birds, man. Uh, you know, going out and seeing these animals, using our techniques uh, to go out without a harvest, just to observe them in their natural state, I think is a huge part of this movement. 
to see how nature interacts with itself, you know. Maybe they'll see, you know, that uh, too many bucks is a bad thing in a, in a small herd. Or they'll see, you know, during the rut how they, you know, get after each other or whatever. But uh, to be able to utilize all the tools uh, like this for something like that, I think people are going to lose their mind over it. I think it's going to be a great thing. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and like you hit on, it's cool to, you know, film these things in, in spots that if you, if you follow the deer society, I mean, you're seeing a lot of, this is, this is the Ducard farm. It's the deer society farm. It's where we film whitetails from scratch. It's where, you know, you're going to see JJ and Mike and Chris hunting this fall and falls to come. I mean, it, this isn't like we, we went to some grand, now we obviously we went to the UK and filmed a bunch of performance <laughs> stuff and that's where we recorded, you know, did the, the recording and, and things like that. But the, like these hunting shots, they're, they're right here, right in, in kind of yeah. our home where, where you guys are hunting, which is pretty cool. I mean, they're in locations where, yeah, we will be hunting yeah. in a few months. So yeah, I mean, parking the truck in the same spot, yeah. standing in the same corner of a food plot or a field. And yeah. I mean, we're trying to make this video as real as possible and, and as true to what we experience deer hunting. Um, you know, I don't think there's been a country music video that really speaks directly to deer hunters or hunters in general right. and is accurate, fully accurate to what yeah. we see, what we experience. And I think we're doing a pretty good job of, of really telling that story and showing that with the visuals so far. Yeah, absolutely. You know, some things to kind of expect in the video. Um, I'll give you, a, you know, so a, a little tease. So obviously some pretty pretty awesome performances from, from Michael, some different kind of uh, performances um, that, that he's had. Um, also from the hunting standpoint, um, lots of kind of, uh, of beauty, some obviously some big deer. Yeah, there's, a, there's actually a shot up on the screen here oh, from, yeah. from this morning. Um, <laughs> Which, uh, which is right out there at the, at the Ducart farm. Um, but, uh, yeah, lots of, lots of beauty shots, uh, lots of big bucks, um, some fun in there. We, we last night went out and, uh, in the evening and, and had you guys and, and Chris and Mike out there too, and just did some shooting, shooting, you know, uh, shooting at the target, kind of cutting it up, just hanging out, you know, a, a kind of a summer night, the boys getting together and hanging out and that was pretty fun. Oh yeah. And that's what we do. We prep for deer hunting, yeah. you know, we shoot our bows in the summer, have fun. That's what it's all about. It's not always just about the moment you go out in the field, sit in the stand and harvest the animal. It's oh, about yeah. the whole preparation for the entire season. And, it, and it's it. funny when you get together with other hunters, I mean, fishermen tell the story about the, you know, the fish and the fish that, you know, when hunters tell the story about the rack, you know, it was tip to tip this wide, <laughs> you know, and it, 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 like, it was probably like this, but you know, it was this big, you know, and. That, that's the best part is uh, these are stories that last a lifetime. Uh, and each hunt is is so unique because, uh, and like we talked about this yesterday, each deer has its own personality. And uh, when, when you get to know that personality and you have that interaction and then you're beyond thankful for, for the harvest. And I, and I, you know, touched on that yesterday is, is to be so thankful for that, to have that interaction and to, to feel that spirit of that animal and, and to know that you're about to harvest for the good of yourself and your family, uh, is it, it's a life changing experience all the way around. So, uh, having that man, I mean, just the, the end of, as an individual hunter, we have our own little quirks, our own little superstitions that we'll follow. So I think, you know, matching, predator and prey, I guess, in, in, in a certain way, uh, or just lover of the outdoors is, man, it's an awesome experience. So can't get enough of it. Absolutely. So going back to last night a little bit, we did have a little, little fun with JJ. Um, we, we, we knew we wanted, uh, some, you know, some really cool high end cinematics shooting, you know, bow shooting shots in this video. And, and there's going to be one in there, uh, I believe for sure. And, uh, so we had JJ shoot at the target a few times and each time, you know, it would let him build his confidence up, move that camera a little closer, a little closer. Now <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not talking camera, like little GoPro that we're, that we're setting out there. You know, we, we, we try to use, you know, the highest end equipment as possible. And, and that's something that, that we, you know, Almond I invest in and, and, you know, um, try to shoot on the, on the best stuff possible. Right. So we got this big camera out there and 
JJ a shoot and we'd move it a little closer. And and the best part is Mike, Michael, and Chris, you know, they're all just in JJ's ear, just egging him on, egging him on, egging him on. <laughs> that was the best part, man. <laughs> so finally, finally the, the last shot there, we had that camera dialed right in over that target. And, you know, we had to have it lined up just right. So we had, I mean, there was only a few inches of, of room for air there. And, uh, oh, man, they were just giving it to him at the end. But, but J.J., he was able to, to hold his composure oh, yeah, there. Mr. And- Nerves of Steel over there put it like, I mean, if, if it was going to be a Robin Hood split the arrow moment, that was it. <laughs> and, I mean, I'm sitting there looking at the at the uh, the notch. And, you know, when you're you're looking straight at it, it looks like the, the notch, that little bit of color in the middle of that black target. It's like it couldn't have been any more dead center. So I was like. He was sandbagging all the way up, making probably making you guys more nervous than anybody else, but he knew what he was doing. Yeah, that was actually pretty good practice because in my mind I was thinking I would never normally miss a target completely. <laughs> and then I got a little bit nervous, and I'm thinking it's kind of like the feeling I'm getting, you know, big yeah. bucks walking in, so oh, I yeah. kind of calm my nerves a little bit, and I thought <laughs> just like every other shot, yep. you just put it in there. So good well, practice. Well, I know it was one of those things where, you know, you know what's going to get dicey when Adam pulls out his cell phone for, and like starts filming behind the scenes, because like, that's when you know that shit's about to go down. <laughs> honestly, it's like, okay, something bad might happen. And I think he thinks in his head, well, if something bad happens, you might as well at least capture it and make it a YouTube hit or something. Oh right? yeah. Yeah. Well, he's going to go viral. <laughs> I think it was your decision. Cause he was shaking his head. Like, I think that was, last shot was good. Yeah. Right. And you're like one more, a little bit closer. Oh man. <laughs> The closer you got to that target, I was like, oh, man. That's what that's what he does every time I fire up that drone, too. You know, we, we did some. There's going to be a, a few pretty cool drone shots in this video, too, and and uh, had had the drone up and flying this morning. But uh, we fly in some pretty dicey spots, you know, and and, and push the limit there safely, push the limit. <laughs> Um, you know, and obviously we're, we're certified I'm certified and insured, everything like that. But, you know, I, I think he's got that feeling every time I, I always push the limb with that drone too. like, Oh, you just got to get a little closer, you know, just, just a little higher, a little lower there. And, you know, I can see Adam, he, he gets a little nervous on me, but it always works out in the end. Right. You know, so what, um, do you guys have a favorite and I know you've got to see some of the some of the stuff that we've shot. You have a favorite scene uh, that so far, or something that uh, has been the most fun in this this shooting deal. Well, yeah, you know, I think the most fun. Well, the funniest part. Let's start with the funniest part. Uh, was when you guys didn't think I would be willing to get wet for this video. <laughs> so uh, we're in the tall ryegrass, and it's sopping wet. And, uh, of course, I'm wearing hunting gear, and I'm used to getting out on that stuff. But I don't know how many times you guys walk that trail to knock the rye grass down. And for me not to get wet, I felt like a pretty, pretty princess, to tell you the <laughs> truth. And I was like, oh, you know. But uh, that, to me, was the funniest part. But um, I loved that that feel, that natural feel, that walking through that with my hands over the top of that, that rye grass, man. That, to me, uh, was the epitome of, of that connection with nature. Like I'm, I'm walking down this thing and this is getting done. And it's just like that. And I think, uh, the four wheeler was just, you know, a blast. Cause you're like a little kid in a candy store with that kind of thing and going up the trail and, uh, looking at something like, yeah, this is, this is something like you said, man, this is something that I'd be doing, um, getting to where I'm going to be, you know, uh, on my hunt. And that was a blast. It was just a great time. It just, Everything was a great time, but those those two really stick out with me. And I mean, that's something I do. I'd do every day if I could. Well, I'm going to touch on two things before I throw it to you, JJ. One, <laughs> so this because we we had this crazy storm the night before. Um, we, we we shot the ryegrass shots that morning. Um, the dew on top of all the rain that we had got that ryegrass was wet. I mean, it was yeah. super wet. So let me just tell you, we we did walk through there about 17 times. <laughs> And uh, it wasn't for you. It's just so you, you, your shirt didn't look wet in the video. Oh, okay. Oh, so I don't feel special anymore. Oh. No, I'm just kidding. No, always, always got to take care of the talent, man. We, we were happy to do it, and, and uh, it worked out good. I, I'll tell you, that's probably some of my favorite shots that that uh, I don't know that we've ever shot. I mean, that it's it just the whole way that that came together was awesome. You know, the the second thing that I'll say there is. You know, you talk about the feeling you had walked through that ryegrass and your hands kind of brushing along the top of it. You know, there's a line in the song there 
um, you know, kind of God's great land. And, you know, we just, we don't have to direct you really at all, you know, when, when we're shooting these things and, and he's performing and walking through this ryegrass. And, you know, that, that was the coolest part because you did something there that it was just like, this is God's great land and, and yeah. kind of belted it out there. And it was just so natural. And it was, you could tell you just felt that deep down in your soul. Oh, absolutely, man. It, and especially with a song like this, the imagery is huge. And uh, that's what I love about, you know, country and Southern rock music is, is the stories uh, that the songs tell. And this song, you, you're, you're waking up and, and you're going deer hunting. If you listen to this and you close your eyes, you can get the imagery. And then the best part about that is when this video hits, you're going to you're going to feel it. And you're going to literally feel like you've gone on a deer hunt. There's there's no question in my mind that that's how it's going to make people feel. Uh singing the song, you know, I don't I would never do uh, any piece of music that I didn't feel or believe in. So being able to perform this song and having uh everything that I have as far as an artist go into it, uh th- this was this is where I was, man. This this was right on the nose. This is where my soul resides, and it, it was such an easy thing to do. And, and you know, you guys picking the locations that you did just made it even that much better, as far as I'm concerned. It, like I said, the location couldn't have been any better. The atmosphere couldn't have been any better. And this this I think the genuineness that goes behind of the production of this song, as well as the lyric content of this, and being able to identify, that's what makes a song a hit. So, JJ, you're up. What, what was your favorite? Well, did you guys forget that Michael jumped in your brand new pickup and uh, wanted to keep speeding up each take we took down the road? So, we started off with a shot, and okay, yeah, Michael, jump in, jump in Brian's truck, brand new truck. Yeah. Go wave back over there. We'll wave you in. Starts out slow. And I think you were filming real speed, right? Yep. Starts out slow. Him and Adam, Brian and Adam, kind of look at each other and they're like, a little bit faster, huh? A little bit faster. I was like, I can do it. 40? 40 on 40? And this is not a road. It's like a trail that I built last year that those kids do. But so he backs up. And then this is slow motion, maybe? Yeah. A little bit quicker. He picks it up pretty good. Hits the culvert. <laughs> I don't know if he got air, but this, this he, he picked it up. The speed, it was probably 30 to 40. I mean, he was getting up there. I don't know. And then he looks over. A little bit, little bit faster. <laughs> yeah, I sure. like I said, sure. I only got like fifty more times of this in my <laughs> in my system. But and uh, he backs up in that last time. He just comes flying. The ryegrass is waving around. And <laughs> I don't know if the shot's going to make the video, but it was great for it was a pretty cool video. shot. That'd be a fun one. Yeah. Yeah. So along, and that was the same thing with a four wheeler. You know, Michael <laughs> goes up the trail, comes back real slow. <laughs> All right, one more time. A little bit faster. A little bit faster. <laughs> I think we did, I don't know, 10, 12 different takes, and yeah. the speed just kept going up and up and up. So, you know, that's, that, that, that was funny. Yeah, that, yeah. Is, that is kind of funny. And just, <laughs> just to relate to that. So, you know, Adam and I think, are, you know, it's always one more time, right? So, like, you have one more time about about thirty times, and that's something that I, that I know I got from from Pat Reeve. He he was always the king of one more time, you know. It's so like always one more time, one more time, and and it's a detail thing, you know. And we we strive to 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 capture the best detail, and you're like, okay, get it one more time, and listen, the truck shots and the four wheeler shots. One more time was no problem, Michael J. J. You were spot on. It, I, I did. I think I did say to you. I think at one point I said, "Look, if we're going to go up another notch, and he's going to take it to sixty, he's taking your truck." <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Oh, the, my favorite part was when Adam does the hole. Yeah, didn't even have to ask, man. It was like we're doing another one. Here comes another one, and that that was my favorite, especially on the four wheeler. I was just like, "Yeah, no problem. Whip, whip it around and go back up, man. It was time to go." Yeah, yeah, that was fun. Yeah, good stuff. They, um, we did have a, a a mascot with us the whole time. That was pretty yeah. cool and pretty yeah. fun. Kept things interesting the whole time. Yeah, and that's uh, that's little Gracie. She's she's laying down here by by Michael's feet. So why don't you introduce Gracie to everybody? Oh, well, uh, Gracie is uh, my service dog, provided to me by uh, Rebuilding Warriors, a, a fantastic outfit out of Texas uh, that supplies service animals to uh, first responder and veterans uh, with PTSD. And, uh, you know, I'm pretty open about my PTSD and depression uh, through my uh, service as well as my sheriff department service. And Gracie's kind of a lifesaver. And she uh, she's at that age where everything's a wonderment, too. Uh, when her vest is on, she's all about work. But I know we took the vest off and, and let her play a little bit. And 
talk about a, a kid in a candy store. I mean, she's she's pretty tuckered out right now. She's uh, balled up over here, her little about the space about this big. And uh, Gracie's a Fox Red English Lab. I get that asked a lot about what kind of dog she looks or what kind of dog she is. But um, yeah, she was a blast. She's uh, always a blessing, and uh, we have a ball with her. And you know, I I like to think that everybody falls in love with Gracie when they meet her, and and uh, it seemed like everybody here at Deer Society did. And you know, she's gonna be tuckered out for the plane ride home back to Nashville. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. No, it was, it was cool having her around. JJ gave her uh, uh, one of his biggest sheds to, to chew yeah, on. Yeah, about a six-inch shed. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, the first day we did uh, we did do some shots with the, with the shed there and yeah. uh, a deer antler, and it was, it was a pretty nice one, right? Where, where is that one from, actually? Go. Oh. We, don't, we don't tell where our sheds are from. <laughs> oh, man. Somewhere in Minnesota, Out yonder. Huh? Yeah. Gotcha. Out yonder. That was at your spot, right? <laughs> I've never seen him before. I guess that's why I never picked it up. There you go. Um, no, but we did. Uh, we did do a, a shot with the shed the first day, and uh, and Gracie, she was all wound up about that. She wanted to have oh, that yeah, shed so she, bad. Yep. But JJ was keeping that one in his truck, and and brought her one today. So that was, that yeah. was nice. Of me. Yeah, yeah. It was the best present she got all week. That's for sure. I will keep her busy on the plane too. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, she's gonna get another hotel bath. That's for sure, though. <laughs> I bet. Yeah, so I mean, just just all around, great great experience. The the whole filming of this thing, a lot of a lot of work, a lot of effort put into it. But I think and and hope that that you guys see, um, you know, and, and kind of feel more than even see um, what this video means to us, and hopefully it means the same to you. Um, you know, the relationship that that us deer hunters have with with our surroundings and the environment, not just you know necessarily harvesting an animal. Um, you know, we're all deer hunters. We all love to harvest the deer and, and I, I'm no different. Um, but you know, it's, it's more than that as hunters, you know, we, it's that experience. It's, it's that connection with, with the outdoors and what's around you. So hopefully, you know, us deer hunters and, you know, people outside of that can, can understand and, and make that connection as well. I think that's kind of the goal of this whole thing, right? Yeah. Well, with the education part of it and what a lot of people don't understand is, is you'll have a tag and sometimes you won't harvest. Uh, you'll see plenty of animals. You'll see, uh, you know, bucks come in. But when you get to recognize uh, what that animal represents in the herd, uh, as far as when you're when you're thinking conservation or when you're thinking management, um, you learn. And with this educational process, with the Deer, Deer Society and Deer Hunting Manor are pushing that education aspect of it, is you're going to be able to identify that. And it's not, like you said, it's not always about a harvest. It's about what's best for the herd, what's best for the animal. Uh, so I think that that part of the education, even with older hunters that uh, for a long time couldn't identify, you know, what uh, status that, that certain buck or that doe had uh, within that because you want to manage your herd properly. And um, it's something that you learn over time. And it, as hunters, if you hunt specifically at a certain area, you'll get to know those animals pretty well. And uh, you'll know when it's time and you'll know when it's not. So I think that, you know, bringing that into play also is a huge educational factor with this whole movement. Yeah, with the whole management and conservation piece, it's not something you look at just, you know, this tag, this season. You got to look right. ahead and... How many does do you have walking around? How many bucks? You know, what what does next year look like? Do we want to save these, you know, yearling exactly. fawns, yearling bucks? You can't just go out there, shoot everything you see because you think it's just a renewable resource and they just big bucks right. pop up and right. and they're there. So it's yeah, there's the education part, there's just that thought process and there's the the management piece that's sometimes even more fun than just the harvest. Oh, how actual. many times have you looked at a buck and said, Man, I'd I'd love he's a beautiful buck, but then you realize he's the strongest and, and you want him to create, you know, the next generation. So that's a, that's a thing in your, in your soul, man, that says, you know what, this is a, a builder of the next generation of these strong animals in, in this area and for them to succeed and for them to be fruitful, you got to let it go. And that's, mm -hmm. you know, and that's a hard thing. I think for a hunter, uh, sometime pride gets involved. But uh, when you learn to let that go and realize that it's for the betterment of the animal and really for yourself, man, because when you come to that realization uh, on that nature level and, and you look at it that way, man, it makes you, you know, it, it even feel that much better. Absolutely. You know, 
not to switch gears here. I, I, I was just looking at Adam and I, and I can't help but bring this up. And it was back when we were over in the UK. And as you all probably know that the roads are, you know, cars <laughs> drive on the opposite side of the road in the UK. I'm so proud of you didn't say wrong side. Yeah, because they, yeah, they, they get upset right when you wrong. say you guys are driving on the wrong side of the road. It's not the wrong side over here. So we, as you know, this this trip is coming and coming and coming and, and we're doing research and Adam's like, so uh, are we just going to get a, a, a some kind of taxi over there? Are we going to drive? And we looked at rental cars and different things. And we, we came to the conclusion that, that we were going to get a rental car. And, and Adam started doing research about how to drive on the other side of the road on Google <laughs> and YouTube. Well, let me tell you, there's certain things that you just shouldn't Google, right? <laughs> well, dr- an American driving in England is one of them. And he started sending me screenshots and, and different reviews, like, and just horror stories, like, whatever you do, don't drive on the side of the, da, 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 da. Well, we got there and we got a rental car. And I, let me tell you, and I, I'm not making this up, we didn't even make it out of the parking lot before making a wrong turn. <laughs> and <laughs> Adam's sweating. I thankfully, and I, and I will have to post this someday somewhere, but I thankfully am trying to, to give him navigation on my phone or on his phone. Uh, thankfully for Google maps over there, because if you didn't have Google maps over there, there's no way that you would ever find your way around if, if you being from here, because the roundabouts, I remember the first roundabout sign, it looks like a cactus of some sort. Like there's not four exits. There's about seven oh, off, off these roundabouts and going the wrong way. And, and, uh, so I'm, I'm trying to navigate on this phone, going out of the parking lot, and thankfully I had my phone and flipped around, and I was filming the whole experience in the in the car there, and that was that was pretty priceless. But uh, you know, after I, I believe we were at at Mike's house or Mike's studio, and uh, we were going back to get something at the hotel, and you jumped in with us. Oh yeah. And I said, Michael, you jump in the front seat. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, all right, he jumps straight in. And I said, well, just to let you know, this is Adam's first attempt at driving in the UK. He's like. Come on. Oh, man. <laughs> I had some security knowing you guys got there a day before me. And then you, I'm like going, oh, this is not good. This is not. But hey, he did great. He did. He, he did great. Hey, he did do a great yeah. job. And, and we, we didn't have any uh, any incidents over there. So it was, but it was quite the experience. Lots of fun throughout this whole thing, man. Oh, it's, yeah. it's been quite the quite the journey for sure. Oh, well, we got to see the great America or the great UK pancake race. Yeah. Who would have thunk it? Yeah. Yeah. You know? I mean, stuff like that. I mean, hey. It's, pretty awesome yeah that was yeah. they had they had kind of teams of or well uh groups of three lined up where you know three women would be lined up there right in the street downtown main street there and and uh all with frying pans and pancakes in there and they'd have to they'd blow the whistle and they'd flip the pancake and run about i don't know 20 30 40 yards yeah. flip it again run another 20 30 40 yards flip it again i think they had to do that three or four times and and whoever made it to the end there and they had a a big kind of circle at the end and and all kinds of mascots and i mean i know there was a guy dressed up and he had like the old english hair on yeah and he was announcing the whole deal it was, it was pretty interesting to see pretty cool deal actually yeah, and actually getting to go to a real english pub and uh you know that was amazing being there uh, at the feathers of course the the huge impact that the Beatles had in such a, a small community like that and to see the memorabilia that the owner Mike had was man, talk about stuff that you you think you'd never see. Handwritten postcards from Paul and Ringo and John. I mean that's that's priceless stuff, especially now. But the impact that they had on the music world, uh, to still be that important to a society man that's that's awesome especially from a musician's point of view absolutely that i mean unbelievable you talk about stuff you'd never see and and lucky enough we got to actually film some of this video there i mean that's that's historical that's oh, that's yeah. i mean it gives me chills a little bit and and you know the owner mike there he's, he's bringing he's got this big safe and and that's where he kept these you know postcards and some of this you know the, the most special beatles memorabilia that he had um yeah, pretty unreal to to see some of that, um, and to trust us Yanks with it. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, look forward to the Deer Hunt Man video coming soon. It's gonna be epic. Um, it's it's gonna be released here before you know it. Can't wait for you to see it. I I, I know you're gonna love it. I hope you love it as much as we do. Um, we're excited about the whole platform, the whole movement. Uh, we've had an absolute blast working with you, Michael. Um, can't wait to do more in the future. Um, 
Thanks for listening. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you subscribe or go download the free Deer Society app. You're going to be able to follow all things Deer Hunting Man there. Um, video, song, uh, platform, get your apparel. Everything's going to be right there and it's free. So definitely check that out. Check out Michael Austin and uh, look for more from uh, from all of us. And thanks for listening. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Oh, it was a pleasure, man.